Hey, and welcome to Board with Life News for April 13th. Today I'm going to talk about Arcane Academy, A Feast for Odin, Charter Stone, Codenames Pictures, and the Kickstarter for Aeon's End. Let's get to it! Hey, I'm Chris. Welcome to Board with Life News. First off, let me apologize if I seem a little groggy and my voice sounds weird. Uh, I've just gotten back from Unpub and I saw I recovered from all the convention sleep deprivation and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, this week was the last episode of Board with Life, the series for season two. And uh, we don't know if we're doing a season three yet, so maybe ever, except we'll do a holiday special. But um, go head over to the Moon Rat Media YouTube channel and check that out. It's the seventh episode of the season. Uh, I wrote and directed it. I'm really proud of it. And people seem to be enjoying it. So that would make me happy. And uh, as I say pretty regularly, that's basically the only reason I do ne anything in life is to make myself happy uh, by way of pulling views from you guys' eyes. So go do that. I said last news that I was going to try to do um, some Unpub videos, um, which Unpub is a convention in Baltimore for unpublished games where people play test uh, designers games that are not yet published and usually not yet signed. I was planning on doing a couple of like convention videos, but I found myself having to split my time between too many avenues. So I think I'm just going to do like a vlog about it where I just sit down and talk a little bit about the experience. Uh, and that'll be coming out from mo uh, most likely later this week. So if that interests you, make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss out on that. All right. Into board game news. Arcane Academy is a design by Eric Lang and Kevin Wilson. It's their first team-up design. These guys are both behemoths in the industry. Eric Lang, of course, Marvel Dice Masters, Bloodborne, a whole bunch of other games. Kevin Wilson, Descent, Arkham Horror, and a whole bunch of other games. So they're absolutely like as big as you can get in this hobby. Uh, this was originally supposed to be released in 2014, but the publisher, I guess they signed with, wasn't doing it. So now it's being co-published. Um, from IDW. It looks like this is going to be a simple tile laying game, which you guys know I'm a big fan of, uh, but they rethemed it. So now it's going to be called Arcane Academy. I don't remember what it was called before. Apparently this is based on in the world of Finding Gossamer, which is like an all ages comic. I assume that ID has the, the rights to. I don't know anything about the comic, so I can't speak to that at all. But uh, yeah, I'm really excited to see a game from Eric Lang and Kevin Wilson, especially because it seems like it's kind of a light euro, which is a little bit interesting for them. A Feast for Odin is Uwe Rosenberg's next giant behemoth game. Uh, we've gotten a little bit more info on it. Apparently it's going to be coming out in Germany in September or October, which sounds like they're shooting for Essen, but Z-Man plans to release it in the U.S. before that, uh, so that's pretty exciting for us. They're shooting for Origins, which is in June, so that's pretty soon, um, but if they can't make it, then I think they're going to do Gen Con, which is in August. So that's really exciting for me, because I love Uwe Rosenberg, and the fact that we get it uh, early is great. This is apparently going to be his largest box yet. It's almost five inches deep, so it's like it's bigger than the Caverna box, which is already absurdly huge. So it seems like he's just keeps using his clout to put more and more and more and more wooden components in his games, which I'm all for. I love that. So uh, yeah, very excited about this one. Stonemeyer Games announced Charterstone. Well, sort of. Jamie Stegmeyer kind of on a little vlog said a little bit about this. So of course the internet blew up because their last game, uh, Scythe, was just an absolute behemoth on Kickstarter and everybody's super excited about. Charterstone, he said, is going to be a legacy Euro game, so combining legacy elements like Pandemic Legacy uh, with a uh, Euro game. And he said that the stuff that really interested him the most about legacy games was that you could start incredibly simple, a really easy to teach game, and slowly add complexity, which is a thing I really like too about legacy games. So I'm very excited to see this. It seems like, uh, yeah, it's going to be a simple Euro game that slowly adds complexity. I have no idea what charter stone is i don't know what the theme is any of that he said that's probably going to be released in an official announcement later this month so i'll make sure to check back in with you guys when he announces that we got word that codename pictures is going to come out um this actually came out of the gathering of friends which is a invite only convention um hosted by alan moon who designed ticket to ride um that's up in niagara falls every year so it's a place where a lot of um publishers and designers and just industry folks that are way bigger than me, I've never gotten an invitation, uh, get together and play games for 10 days. It's also kind of evolved into a place where there's not really press and the press, you're not, it, so people are showing games that they aren't allowed to publicly announce or things that are in IPs that aren't announced yet. 
Um, so there's a lot of that kind of stuff going on, a lot of playtesting of that kind of stuff. Um, so it didn't seem like this was like a leak or anything. There, It seemed like it was a fine announcement that just happened to come out of that. Uh, but basically Codenames Pictures, which I can only assume is basically Codenames with Dixit cards, which is a really popular variant that a lot of people like playing by, where instead of having 25 words, you have 25 pictures. And then it's just the exact same Codenames rules. Um, so it's pretty interesting that Czech Games decided to like make it an official game. It's also smart, because they can make a bunch of money off of it. Uh, and I'm excited to see it. So it's, it's yet to see if there's going to be any changes beyond just kind of the like homebrew variant. But yeah. This week's Kickstarter is for Aeon's End. This is a cooperative deck building game set in the post-apocalyptic future. Uh, it plays one to four players and it plays in 60 to 90 minutes. It's a pretty cool deck building game. Every player has like unique cards that only they have and they also have unique abilities that they can do. It's something like there's a, you're fighting these, they're called the nameless monsters, whatever, uh, to kind of survive. So it's a really cool theme, um, very evocative theme, for, especially for a deck builder. And the co-op nature is pretty interesting and it has really, really cool artwork. It is 48 bucks right now on Kickstarter, so go back that if you're interested in that. All right, that's the news for this week. Thanks so much for tuning in. Make sure you follow me uh, on Twitter. I'm at Chris Bryan Games. On Instagram, at Chris Bryan Games, and you subscribe here. Also, make sure you go to the Moonrat Media YouTube page and watch our series. Subscribe to that and follow Board with Life on Twitter and Facebook and all that good stuff, so you can keep up to date with everything that's going on with me and the stuff I do. Um, this week's question comes from at David Dekigoyan via Twitter. Twitter, like the actual at names are seem to be the hardest things ever. I think it's because nobody capitalized anything. Anyways, um, he asked, what was a highlight for you from Unpub 6? Um, that It was a, such a great convention. It was so well run. Daryl Louder, who runs it, did an incredible job. Uh, I would have to say, even though there were a ton of stuff, really just like getting to see my friends that are in the design world that I only get to see a couple times a year at conventions and also meeting a lot of cool new people. I got to meet some new people. Uh, it's just such a cool community. And like every time I go to a convention, I'm always just like struck by just how like nice and helpful and humble everyone is in the community. It's really crazy. I mean, this is a convention that had 125 different designers and there are publishers there that are like looking for games and stuff. But everybody's just freely giving of everything. There's no competition. There's no like malice or any kind of like bickering or anything like that. It's literally like a bunch of designers all together to show their games. And then like 2000 play testers that are just there to play unfinished games, which is crazy. Like it's like people really wanting to see rough cuts of movies instead of the finished cut of the movie or in addition to the finished cut of the movie. So it's just people freely giving of themselves to help other people. And that's awesome. But yeah, hanging out with the people I only get to see a couple times a year and yeah, great stuff. Um, I'll go in a vlog later this week uh, into detail about kind of how my games play tested as well as some other really cool games that I got to play test and kind of the overall experience. So if you're interested in kind of like knowing more about it or what it was like or you have interest in my games and stuff, make sure you tune into that. It'll probably be on ooh, Friday or maybe Monday of next week so um yeah make sure you tune in for that because otherwise why would i do it right all right so uh thanks for tuning in this week and i'll see you next week